chicas bonitas. Tell me I love you. You want to know what I own? Well, I own all that you can see around me now. We've got 3,000 acres here. Uh, I'm up big house behind and a dozen farmhouses and a dozen cottages. Oh, give me land, lots of land under starry skies above. Don't fence me in. In 1199, King Richard the Lionheart bequeathed a magnificent house and 3,000 acres of prime Devonshire countryside to Francis Fulford I for a job well done in the Crusades. 800 years later, the Fulford family are still here, but the house is falling apart and there's no money to save it. Don't fence me Fuck me, I can't be bothered to do that. Fuck all. Fuck, I'm dead. Fuck off. Fuck off. Fuck off. Oh, piss off. Let me ride. Oh, you shit ass. Fuck off. Fuck off. Don't speak to me like that. Just sit down, darling, sit still. Just sit still, you can hit him later. <laughs> That's it, Evan. <laughs> darling, why aren't we richer? It really annoys me. I thought you were. What? I thought you were. What? Rich. <laughs> <laughs> you think we're rich? Everything is relative. Well, I'm sorry. If we were rich, I'd have had somebody cooking If we were rich, lunch. you fuckers wouldn't be here, would you? The fact you're here demonstrates our poverty. <laughs> come on. Come on. All my life, from my earliest times, I can remember that I knew this place would be mine. And I also knew there was a distinct shortage of something called money. One of a dying breed of landed aristocracy, Francis Fulford is asset rich but cash poor. Today the Fulford family live in genteel poverty, struggling to keep their heads above water as the old house slowly crumbles into dust. You know, you go up and you go down. We haven't been up since about the 1840s. I had a bad ancestor. He went down in 1860 for about 60,000 pounds, which in modern money is more than six million pounds. My life has been spent permanently under the black cloud of bloody debt. It costs Francis 30,000 pounds a year just to keep Great Fulford ticking over. But with an overdraft last year of over 200,000, he's far short of the one million pounds he needs to save the house from dereliction. Right, it's a big thing with these houses. The roof is the most important thing. Something's gone there, nailed. As long as you stop the water getting in, really nothing else matters. Yeah, that and the wiring. The fuck all point in stopping water coming in if the whole thing's going to burn down, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Once the water comes in, you're stuffed. That's where the water comes in. And you can see where the water goes in, because all the wood's rotten. Years ago, a house like Great Fulford would have employed an army of servants. A luxury Francis can no longer afford. So at the age of 39, Francis married Kishan. My worst thing is my recurring nightmare, which I've had this week, once this week. And I wake up and I think, oh, I've never been up that staircase. Where's that staircase? And I go up staircases and I open the doors and it's into more rooms that look like this. And I think, I'm going to have to get out of bed. I've got all that to do as well. That is my recurring nightmare. I met my wife really principally because I got drunk. 
And she came down here when I first brought her down here and loved it. She didn't think in a practical format, oh God, that's an awful lot of floors which need scrubbing. Oh goodness, how am I going to find the cleaners? Or to do that, or what a lot of work. She was bowled over by the romance of a place. Oh, look, a newspaper. Actually, it's only 1968. And that makes me laugh, I think. Somebody was in here in 1968, and why didn't they tidy it up? When people talk about this sort of knackered look, the fact of a couple of generations, or maybe much more in this case, but five generations not having very much money. Everybody else has these stupid houses done up to the nines, and it's different, it gives it charm. <laughs> to save Great Fulford from ruin, Francis needs to find some money, and soon. He could always sell off some of his acreage, but that's not the done thing. Instead, Francis spends his time dreaming up new money-making schemes. Today, he's putting his faith in technology. Now, what better kit have you got for me this time? Ah, uh, metal detector. Ah, hooray. I knew it was the exciting bit of kit. This was meant to be Humphrey's birthday present. But it was really one of those things you always do of... It was a present to me which was masquerading as a birthday present to Humphrey. A Daily Telegraph special offer. You would have thought, logically, as there's been a house on this site for at least a thousand bloody years, that some idiot must have dropped a gold coin about somewhere and I want it. <laughs> what shall we do with a Reggie Roo? I don't know. Do you? Definitely there. I need a trowel. Dig, dig, Humph, with a vengeance. Oh, sweet Daddy, it must be somewhere in the rubble. How deep is it, Dad? I'll get that off. Right, move that away while I just see where it ends. Because you see, that is metal. You see, oh, what's that? There it is. We've got him. What is it? The it's one pence one. coin. Hooray! Your first treasure, Humph. We've got another 9,999 of these to find before we get payback. That'll help find balance. <laughs> Great. How much does this thing cost? <laughs> 99 pounds. 99 pounds? I know, it's a con. I'm optimistic. I, I can't believe you spent 99 pounds on this. I know, a lot of pennies get going. A lot of pennies, we've got to find a lot more pennies. Please don't watch me drop ash into the potatoes because Francis will never forgive me, OK? You need children in a house, especially a house like this, needs children. They bring it alive, they make it fun, and they enjoy it. And I'll tell you what, they are the bunch of puff. If all your children end up as queers, that's the end of a family, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, you've got to breed. <laughs> no, I've got nothing against queers. But that doesn't mean to say you want them in your family. You don't want to breed them, because you won't breed from them. Like breeding a mule. Tilda! Don't kill him. So boring. No fighting over. Stop it! Tilda! Why are you doing it? Oh, God. Tilda! No! He's dead, right? No, that's enough. Enough! Enough! Enough. Right. Why are you attacking him? Oh, I see it's fair enough. I think it brings a happier house and a happier family life if your children can appreciate and understand and agree with most of one's own prejudices. I remember half at four years old, he'd be taken out by a friend from school and they'd gone to Exeter. We were chatting about it. I said, how do you get on in Exeter? He said, oh, Daddy. But we're Germans in the pizza bar, express or whatever it was. Germans? God, Arthur, how awful. 
Exactement. 